So I think now um, we are there to start. So hello, uh, good morning everyone. Um, first, I would like to welcome you for uh, attending the webinar and then introduce myself. My name is Ala Musa, the sales director for Hagar Middle East, and I will be your moderator for the webinar of today. I would like also to introduce, just a moment, sorry. To introduce our speaker for the webinar today, Johannes Tome, the VP, Sales and Marketing Amenyat Region. As you all know, COVID-19 put lots of restriction on travel. For that, unfortunately, we were not able to receive our customers and partners in our production sites in Europe. And today, through this platform, we are pleased to launch our factory virtual tour. So you will be able to visit and see some of these production sites. Also, we will be, after the pandemic, we will be pleased to welcome you to visit in person us there. Some tips about the webinar. During the webinar, you will be in a silent mode, which means that you will not able to use neither your mics or cam. If you have any questions, you can write it down on the chat box on the platform, or you can ask all your questions up by the end of the webinar. If you face any problem in connectivity, please refresh your browser and you will be reconnect easily. For better clarity, we advise you use your headset. You will have during the webinar or by the end of the webinar, there will be a poll type questionnaire. Once you ask, once you answer, you'll be entitled for a withdrawal for a gift few days after the webinar. After the webinar, you will receive an email for your thoughts and feedback about it. Also, this webinar is recorded, so you will be, you will be able to replay this version on our social media channels, YouTube, Haga Middle East, LinkedIn, Haga Middle East. You will also receive our newsletter for our upcoming agenda for the upcoming webinars, if, in case you're interested to join. Now I give the mic to Johannes Tome for enjoy the journey. Thank you very much, Alan, and a warm welcome to our today's webinar, factory tours in some of our factories in Hegel, in Blieskastel, in Aubanais, and in Ottfingen. 
My name is Johannes Thome. I'm in charge of sales and marketing Armeniat, and I will be your tour guide for today. Do you know that in Hager we are still a family owned company? For us, that's an important message as some of our clients believe this is only a small and little entity. Indeed, it's the opposite. We as a family owned company have our future in our own hands. We have all rights to talk about sustainability and have a long term view for our business and we are not triggered by a short term interest of our shareholders. This makes us very successful and maybe you know that in Europe 80% of the GDP is created by small and medium sized companies. Here it's very clear we are following our market trends and market needs and for that Hager is a synonym. We as Hager are trying to make our planet safer, cleaner and more enjoyable. For that, our CEO Daniel Hager will tell you later on some words in her, his introduction for our factory tour. Hager was founded in 1955 in a very small village called Ensheim, close to Saarbrücken in the southwest of Germany. And the founders, Oswald Hager, Hermann Hager with a father Peter Hager couldn't imagine that over the years we produced such a lot of different products and solutions for our customers. When the activity started in 1955 it was a very small 50 square feet activity in a small town and nowadays you will see later how it evolved in the last decades now after 65 years to a really big entity and company in Europe. When we are talking about our solutions, you see that it's mostly about safe power supply in buildings. This is our message that we want to transfer to our customers and it doesn't matter if it's residential or commercial buildings. Some figures now which should be interesting for you as well. I believe you couldn't imagine that we are already more than 11,500 employees in Hagen and we are representing already more than 2.2 billion euro revenue in 2020 last year. However, well, it's not only a European activity and you see that we are operating in more than 120 countries with 24 different production facilities worldwide. This also shows that we are not only a German or French activity, now it's already a worldwide and global player. For sure, you haven't imagined that Hager Group is also covering seven different brands. And this shows now that we are really following the market needs after some years of acquisitions and completing our product and solution offer for our customers. If you don't know these brands, please feel free to get in touch with your local sales representative and to ask more details. Feel free to bother and to ask them. Solutions. Here you see the full board if you haven't had any idea how it will look like. And this is again all our ideas and solutions for power supply in small buildings, in residential areas and in commercial activities as well. This is the full basket Hager can provide. Our locations. Do you remember in how many countries we are operating and how many production facilities we have? Wait a second. More than 120 countries and in 24 countries we are producing locally and mostly for the local market needs. We never moved our production activities in low cost countries to produce cheaper and to uh, improve our results. We were always close to our customers and try to facilitate the needs of the markets uh, locally in our different countries. So for that reason, 24 activities should be close enough to our customers. And for that, let's come closer now to our factory tour, which will start soon. Here, 
some words of our CEO, Daniel Hagen, and I want to invite him to start our factory tour in the coming minutes. Hello and welcome to all our friends on this virtual factory tour. We're delighted to be able to take you on a behind the scenes tour of our modern site. You will be enjoying a closer view of the processes and machinery involved in the manufacturing of our products and solutions. We have been family owned and run since 1955 with an entrepreneurial spirit that drives us up to this day. We want to keep shaping the electrical world of tomorrow together with you, our customers and partners. Safer, cleaner and more enjoyable. With more than 11,500 employees and 24 production sites around the globe, we develop and produce groundbreaking innovations that have been inspiring the world of electrical engineering for over 60 years. Interacting with our customers has always been important to us. It is therefore with great pleasure that we present this evolution of our factory visits, the virtual factory tour. The current pandemic has of course had a large part to play in this decision. We want to keep you and our teams safe. My name is Daniel Hagen and I sincerely hope you enjoy your tour. Take care. So, welcome all to Bliescastle, the heart of our enclosures production in Germany. Close to Ensheim, the small village close to Saarbrücken where everything started. And let's ask EPEC how it looks like inside our factory. Welcome. station the assembly line for the enclosures. We use this system to manufacture our premium product, the enclosure made of sheet steel. But how does it all start? It starts with our raw material. We use sheet steel coils. That means that our raw material is found on a large road. One coil weighs around two tons and we use a sheet thickness of one mm. The manufacturing process is fully automated and it's also the largest assembly line in the plant with a total length of 120 meters. Let's take a closer look. What happens during the first steps? The sheet coil is fed to the machine, then it's stamped and cut to size. Now we get four parts subsequently make up an enclosure. These four parts are processed and the cable entry points on the head, bottom and side sections of the enclosure are stamped by a stamping machine. These four parts now go onto the green conveyor belt from where they go to the next processing step. The four enclosure parts now proceed to the metal bedding machine. We have two of these machines, the first one for the front side and the second one for the back side of the enclosure. The next step here is to fold and bend. This means that these four enclosure parts are formed into a stable shape and the frame for the doors is worked into it. Once these two production steps are complete, the fully automated process continues to the next step, which is the welding process. Our four enclosure parts arrive at the welding station via the conveyor belt system, and here we can produce two enclosures at the same time. In this area, we have two welding tables, so-called welding carousels, on which we can produce two enclosure bodies simultaneously. But how does this production step work? Here you can see different robots in action. The robot directly in front of us grabs these four enclosure parts and puts them on a storage table, the so-called magazine. They are stored here temporarily. The second robot, to the left of the first, removes these four parts from the storage table and equips one of the two rotating welding tables with them. Once the enclosure parts are in the correct position, the table rotates and the welding process begins. We use the so-called tungsten inert gas welding process here. The special part about this process is that we do not need any additional welding material such as wire additives, but instead join the parts together at a very high temperature in one step. So in actual fact, you would need to get laid down at this moment to properly review this welding process. But for us, the cameraman has already done this work. Here you can see how four synchronously working welding robots vertically weld the vertical down scene 
In parallel, we can see the single robot arm welding the corner horizontally. A total approximately 600 reference samples can be produced here. The enclosure now is almost finished, but the rear wall is still missing. Another robot is now used, called the handling robot. This removes the finished enclosure body and turns it over. Then it goes to the spot welding process and the 4.6 mm thick rear wall is inserted. The enclosure is finished and the process continues to the most important production step, the quality control. Here you can see the black box and the quality check takes place within this black box. It contains a total of 16 cameras which lock every angle of the welding scene each second. If all is in order, the robot receives the information and can hang the checked enclosure body on the chain conveyor. Should something go wrong, it gets sent via the reject belt to the colleague to be reworked. Look at that ceiling now and we will see all of the finished parts, enclosures, doors, panels and frames. The parts are now ready to be power coated. But before the finished parts are power coated, they must first go to the washing system. We have a washing system with five different washing stations. The containers have got water and phosphatizing. The production step has made the finished parts very oily and dirty. These must therefore be rinsed off. This is followed by the phosphatizing. This step is important because the surface gets a rough texture, causing the powder to adhere better. In addition, the phosphatizing protects the enclosure, doors, and smaller parts against rusting. Following the cleaning, it's onto the drying process at approximately 200 degrees before continuing into the power coating phase. Several nozzles are in use here, and it's wonderful to see how the powder coating is applied to the enclosures, doors, and smaller parts. The powder comes out of the nozzle and is positively charged in the tip of the nozzle. The enclosures are negatively charged. What is special about the powder coating system is that these two openings can be seen here. This is a suction system that sucks up the excess powder and sends it back to the process because sustainability is very important for us. So the enclosures, doors, and smaller parts are powder coated. You can see it here with this matte white surface. However, our enclosures have a glass surface. Therefore, it's approximately 20 minutes in the oven where the powder coating is baked on. Before proceeding to the final assembly, we go first to the injecting molding area. Here we will take a look where all the plastic parts of the plastic distributor rosa and gamma are produced, and everything needed to manufacture an enclosure for mini distributor. We have over 50 injection molding systems in this part of this production, so let's take a look of one of them as an example. Everything starts here too with our raw material. We use thermoplastic material from these big packs of room sleeves. Thermoplastic material is conveyed in form of granulates via filling cylinder onto the heated screw. Solid plastic is liquefied at 210 degrees by during this plasticizing process. The raw material is then pressed into the tool via the ejection nozzle at a very high pressure of up to 2300 bar. A cooling period follows, which varies depending on the size of the tool and the molded part. This cooling period is further accelerated by the gas pressure process. The advantage of this process is that the molded parts become more stable through the meat and be safe on the raw materials. Sustainability is very important to us in every area. And what is special about using this thermoplastic material is that we collect the scrap, shred, and add it back to the process. Here we have 100% recyclability. So before we move on with the next production step, I would like to show you this enclosure. All components of this enclosure are produced here in house. Our motto is, as far as it is possible, we produce as much as possible in our plants. You see the small plastic disc with screws and washes, but everything else, over 98%, is produced here in house by Hara. So our enclosures are ready. The interior is also ready, and we can continue with the packaging system. So the packaging line is also a fully automated production line. We have the option of setting 50 different box sizes, and we'll take a look at one of those now. Different types of robots are also used here. The gripper begins the process. It grips the lower section of the packaging and places it on the centering area. Coming from the left side, the enclosure is placed. At the same time, a hot glue is sprayed on. During the next step, 
the part one packaging, pack section arrives, and everything is firmly joined together. The robot on the left removes the finished package and brings it onto the conveyor belt. It's now strapped, labeled, and then brought directly to the high shelf warehouse in a fully automated process. In the logistics area, you will find incoming goods with material from other sites or external supplies. The automated small parts warehouse, the large parts warehouse, and of course, the high shelf warehouse. Let's take a look at our high shelf warehouse. The high shelf warehouse can accommodate around 12,000 pallets divided into six aisles with fully automated storage and retrieval machines. The warehouse organization is chaotic which means that no one apart from the computer knows where the pallets are situated. In addition, first in and first out guarantees that no goods remain in the warehouse for longer than is needed. And only full pallets of single items are stored here and we have a stock turnover every 14 days. Interesting to note is that the logistics center at the East Castle site was the first unit to be built in 1982. In addition to the high shelf warehouse, we have the automated small parts warehouse and the large pallet warehouse for our daily business. The automated small parts warehouse stores around 20,000 trays with around 5,300 different items, the equivalent of 1,700 pallets. According to the good demand principle, the goods are automatically handed over to a pickup who packs the customer orders accordingly and makes it ready for dispatch. All that is missing in the large parts, they are brought to the packaging area via the pallet picking system. Around 4,900 European standard pallets are stored here. In New York, the customer orders are finally packaged at the 14 packing stations delivered to goods outwards. From here, the pallets go to you or customers all over the world via 15 runs. And now we are back at the start of our factory tour. Would you have expected that? A workforce of 1,300 employees at the Wisconsin site produce 360,000 enclosures per year, 2.5 million distributors, all made in Germany quality. You will find an enclosure from Helga in almost every home in Germany. In many houses, you will find switch programs or dog communication devices from us, or even all of them. Just take a look around the homes of your neighbors and friends. They all trust in solutions from Helga. Even in commercial buildings, low voltage distributions up to 4000 ampere and tracking systems from Hega are better, of course. Hega, safe and easy. Thank you very much, Ipek, and uh, I will see you later. So, have a small break, take a water or a cup of coffee or tea. And at a glance, the key points you should remember for our factory in Peace Castle. Built in 82, on a ground of more than 100,000 square meters, we are mostly distributing enclosures, metal enclosures, and plastic enclosures, and this more than two and a half million every year. Still excited? I give you a few seconds more before we move to another small town close to Strasbourg in France. Do you know Aubanet? If not, have a look in the heart of our production of our breakers, of the MCB, of Hager, and enjoy your tour in Aubanet. Needed to do the circuit breaker. Would you have stopped that? 
In addition to the components of the Rotterdam circuit breakers, parts for other hardware group products are also manufactured here. We manufacture about 1.2 billion parts in these functions every year. On both sides of the pass, you can see presses for the production of individual parts and components. This includes coils, contact arm chambers, components for locks, a bimetallic strip for thermal triggering, cages for connections, terminals, and so on. A total of around 50 presses are used to manufacture the parts. These are supplied with raw material in form of big toys. Here we have two types of presses. Arcade presses for geometrically simple parts up to 800 pounds at the end, and multi-slide presses for more complex components, two or three parts per second. Hargo manufactures about 95% of all the parts for our production. For example, screws, springs, or similar small parts are for chains. Let's go to the toy function. As in every hardware tool factory, Auvergne also has its own tooling workshop. This is where plastic injection molding and torching and bending tools are manufactured and retained. Harder attached rate importance to tool maintenance according to the motor maintenance before repairing. For example, a plastic injection mold must be served after approximately 1,000 hours of operation. So let's go to the injection of plastic parts. The plastic injection workshop has 78 presses, including 46 electric presses. We produce all the technical plastic parts used in the manufacture of hardware equipment. We have an injection workshop on each production site. In Auvergne, one workshop is at U1 and the other in U2. The raw material in granular form is fed to the mold by a screw conveyor. During this operation, it is heated to between 280 and 350 degrees. It is converted into a liquid paste and injected. The mold is cooled with water or oil so that the part obtained returns to a solid state. The mold is covered, then the injectors push the injected parts, which are thrown in the containers, eyes of a variety, or taken directly by a mold. We have here 1,500 references of parts with a weight varying from 2 mg to 76 g. This process continues 24 hours a day. Let's go to the production of single and multiple circuitry. There are several production lines on the site, all operating independently. In total, approximately 45 to 50 million tools every year are produced here. On the lines at U1, the process is fully automated. A line consists of several rods, each of them assembling the components produced by the molding and stamping department. On the line, there is a place dedicated to the assembly of the thermal subset, then another one for the magnetic part, and finally a block for the assembly of the zero or extinguishing gauge. The complete product is then closed by cover. After the production line, the product automatically passes through test stations. Here, there are three different tests. First one, an electromagnetic test. Five test cycles. Second one, high voltage or de-electrical test. Three test cycles. And the last one, thermal test. 15 test cycles. If one of the 23 individual tests is unsuccessful, the circuit breaker is ejected from the line for manual repair. Then the assembly of the circuit breaker is finished in a workshop located between U2 and U3. It is then decided whether the circuit breaker remains single port or becomes a multipole breaker. The finished multipole circuit breaker obtained will be also tested again electromagnetic, high voltage, and thermal test. In summary, at Hager, every circuit breaker is tested before leaving the factory. So, let's walk to U3 for the finishing of this multiple circuit breakers. We have shown you the automated line in U1 for single and multiple circuit breakers. The finishing of these products is done in a workshop between U2 and U3. 
four single ports have radios are fed to this finishing line and depending on the references, the product will remain single port or will be combined to become a multiple. The multiple assembly is not only done at the top but also internally. If one phase is triggered on the multiple, then the other phases must also be triggered. The hardware logo marking is done with ink and the laser marking is used for technical information. The circuit breaker is then placed in the sales packaging and then in the transport component. Let's go to the phase and neutral line. U3 produces modular phase and neutral circuit breakers and differential blocks, mainly for the French market. Compared to the other circuit breakers, they also have a neutral connection. In the French version, the input is at the top of the product and the output at the bottom. The line of these products is autonomous and occupies half of the factory. Four production lines in parallel make it possible to manufacture four different references at the same time. The quality control, as for the multiple circuit breakers line, is integrated in the semi automated line. A black marking under the product allows the robots to direct the product on the corresponding bed conveyors. When the products are checked and completed, they enter an automatic marking machine. The gray marking of the products is done by laser and the blue ink is used for the local. Packaging is done at the end of the line. A final quality control is carried out before the products are put into stock. Let's go to YouTube. This plant produces two and four pole differential switches from 16 to 125 amps. We produce approximately 5 million products every year. The production starts with the automated winding of the rigid connection of the primary winding around the magnetic core of pole. The next step will be the mounting in the base of the first component on a rotative automated machine. The installation of the course is done manually. Swiss semi automatic welding robots carry out the welding of the course and the fixed contact, as well as manual insertion of contact holders. The products are brought to the entrance of the semi automated line in charge of product assembly. Operators position components on a mobile plate, which enters the assembly route. The lock, a small circuit board, and a very important element in a differential product is a relay, which I will tell you more about right away. At the robot exit, the differential switches are repositioned on the line corresponding to them in order to be finalized by the installation of a cover on the fridge. The products then enter an automatic adjustment, measurement, and control system. The magnetic fields are adapted, a fault current is generated several times and the trip is checked and the test button is tested. If a differential switch fails the test, it is automatically ejected from the line with an error. After manual repair, it must pass the cycle tests again. All conforming products are then marked and individually packaged. Let's go to the relay production. For this strategy product, we control the development and manufacturing for all our needs. Intended to play a larger role in product ensuring the protection of the people, particular attention is paid to the working environment and manufacturing. The protected environment ensures that the required parameters for the proper operation of the relay are obtained throughout the manufacturing process. Overlay is the unique hardware group production plant where we produce relays. So, that was our little tour of the plant. I hope you had a good overview and insight into our production. Thank you, Frosmas, for this insight in Obane. And honestly, I'm a little bit exhausted after so many details and technical information. I need a sip of coffee. And in the meanwhile, you can check at a glance what are the key points for Obane.
Everything clear? Still excited? Do you want to have a look in another product group, which is one of the most famous in Hagen and produced in an area called Sauerland, means sour land in the middle of Germany? Maybe you have heard about company Burger and the production of our sockets and switches there. So let's have a look inside the production facility and factory of Ottfingen. And I say welcome back to EPEC. She will take care on the introduction of our activities in Ottfingen. Enjoy. So we are already at our first station, Utzel Manufacturing Department. Like an m Group plant, Ottfingen also has its own tool manufacturing department. Punching, injection molding, and pressing tools are manufactured, repaired, and made in two ships. The tool manufacturing department here in Ottfingen is responsible for approximately 6,000 injection molding tools and around 2,000 punching tools with 38 employees in three different areas. This number is constantly increasing because, for example, for a new switch series, about 200 different tools of different sizes need to be produced. Parker attached great importance to maintaining and regularly repairing tools in order to increase their operational capability. To check the required accuracy, the tool manufacturing department has its own measuring equipment, including a tactile measuring machine and a state-of-the-art digital measuring microscope. Here we can see the measuring microscope in action. This is Chris Luke, and he is currently measuring the surface profile of the tool insert, which is then evaluated to see whether we have achieved the specific powder E surface. We used to evaluate this subject D. With this device, we are now able to achieve a reproducible welding. Tool manufacturing means teamwork. The individual traits must be precisely coordinated and agreed upon. In order to guarantee close interaction with the skilled workers of the future, the apprenticeship workshop is an immediate area. Since 2014, we have been continuously certified as an excellent training company, absolutely approved. Let's continue one level down towards the stamping department. Special design requires special technology. For this reason, we have developed a special deep drawing process. We shape our car film, stainless steel switch to almost 19 degrees without welding or soldering sites. Let's take a closer look at our stamping department. We are in method production. All tools from the tool manufacturing department are used in this area. We produce one million parts a day in three shifts. And all start with the raw material. We use tape material in form of coils made of brass, copper, stainless steel and coated material. So here we are with Marco. In this area, all our machines are used to punch the components according to the progressive principle. This is followed by complex standing operations right through to assembling the components. Monitoring takes place while serious production is ongoing and important features are 100% checked with in-process inspections. Let's have a look at the showcase. The selection of our products, such as various contacts, surrounds and buttons, can be seen here. All components for switches and sockets are produced here in-house. We buy standard components such as screws, nuts, flange bushings, and all other components, 98% of the portfolio, are produced in-house. Our next stop is the Duoplast production. Our Duoplast production, where we are now, is one of the most modern Duoplast production facilities in Europe. The aim was to have a continuous production line, which is why we produce six running machines on one line with connecting, deburring, sorting, and quality control. The best part is we have two of these machines. Our Duroplast raw material is automatically drawn in by every machine via a pipe system. Duroplast have a consistency like sugar, and Duroplast production is like baking a bowl. Let's take a closer look at this process. The raw material is added to the mold and curved under pressure and temperature. This produces a slight burn due to the process. This burn is removed by a plastic blasting abrasive in a continuous blasting machine. Our aim to achieve fully automatic continuous production has been accomplished with these lines. We will now move on to the next area, thermoplastic production. In thermoplastic production, we have 48 injecting molding machines. 
Here, we distinguish between design parts and technical components. Werke and Hager components are manufactured in both areas. There are 12 different types of material used in over 200 variations of types and colors. In thermoplastic production, 4,000 tools are used to manufacture around 10,000 different components. Let's take a closer look at the process of two component injection molding system. Here, two different raw materials are processed in one tool. For example, waterproofing. Polypropylene is used for the housing and thermoplastic is used for the seal. Here, we have a turret tool. In addition, in some cases, in-process inspections are used to implement 100% checks. In our waterproof example, an optical camera is used at the end to check that the seal is complete. The advantage with thermoplastic is that the process can be repeated as often as required. This gives us 100% recycling capability as an unused material can be shredded again and added to the process. Let's move on to the most important step in the production process, the quality control. To check the quality of our product, during validation, we have an air-conditioned measuring room with state-of-the-art measuring technology and specially trained staff. Let's take a closer look at the computer tomography scanner, the heart of the measurement technology. In addition to external and internal contours, the fat and porosity analysis, as well as wall thicknesses, volumes of components made from different materials and workpieces up to a size of 350 millimeters can be measured in the X, Y, and Z axis and displayed in 3D representations using state-of-the-art software. With this 3D coordinate measuring machine, mainly smaller components are measured optically and capability analysis is carried out on up to 50 parts. Since redesigning our measuring technology in 2009, the Akula 2 tactile coordinate measuring machine has been a part of our inventory. First stop is the backer socket production facility. In this system, we produce eight types of sockets. The machine operates at 50 cycles per minute and delivers an annual quantity of 10 million units. A camera, which can be seen in this area here with the red light, checks that the socket is complete, for example, whether all parts have been inserted. If a contact is missing, this part is not treated further in the next assembly steps, but is rejected. Let's move on to the backup switch system. 80 different types of switches are produced here. The annual quantity is 4.2 million units. Every single switch in the switch system is electrically tested. The rocker cell is located nearby. On this new line, all operations for finishing and packaging of rockers from different design lines have been automated. With the new packaging concept, our components are packed with our films. This is a milestone on the road to waste prevention and sustainability. Special colors are also possible. In the painting cell, we achieve sharp throughput times for painted components. Especially for small quantities and manufacturing orders, we are faster here than with our external partners. This process is an essential part of the flexibility. With more than 10,000 customer testimonials, fast turnaround times and a high degree of delivery reliability can be guaranteed. We were founded as a Spezialfabrik für elektrotechnische Apparat. We have stayed through this principle. And that is why we have the Berka Manufaktur Custom Manufacturing Service. Because more and more people today are following the trend of no longer following a trend. Berka's manufacturer produces utterly unique switches which are a real blend of high-tech and craftsmanship. What matters is individuality, not speed. The manufacturer service gives you the opportunity to customize your switches and sockets with the design, color, surface and material to match your interior. In addition to the manual work, state-of-the-art additive production processes, 3D printing are also used here. Outstanding examples of this are the hardware-wide implementation of the digital UV printing process, which eliminates the need for solvents or chemicals. More than 1,000 different solutions are developed and manufactured here every year, whereby the number of pieces does not matter. For an individual part of a high-quality private building to thousands of parts for large hotel or residential complexes. About 150,000 Unique products are produced 
annually and sold in over 50 countries. Let's take a closer look at some examples. Soft touch service on the switch is made of a special material that gives the switch a warm and well lit feel. Those who like to furnish their homes with an nostalgic look will find the perfect switch range in the Manufaktur Editions back as million at You decide and we implement it. To summarize, we produce custom solutions from the entire spectrum of smart electrotechnical installations. From individually configured cable trunking to unique switches, controls, and even compatible door communication devices, all perfectly coordinated. Haga, Berka, Elkom, three brands, one manufacturer. And now we are back at the beginning of our factory tour. Would you have expected that? 495 employees at the Ottingen site, an area of approximately 30,000 square meters and 18 million switches and sockets per year, all with made in Germany quality. In residential and functional buildings, switches and sockets from Berka are made of course. And if you want something special, there's the Manufaktur custom manufacturing service for Haga, Berka and Elko. Haga, safe and easy, very easy. Thank you, Ipek, again for this presentation. And I'm always excited when I see the colors and the design of our Berker ranges. On a glance, the key points for Ottfingen. And you see, they founded the company in 1919, a few years before Hager was founded. And it's more than 18 million switches and sockets every year. You know that it's not only about factories. And as Anna mentioned, it was already a problem to invite you in the last two years due to the pandemic. So this is a special way to stay in touch with you and to invite you to see what is going on in Hager. Maybe in a few years, we can use virtual re reality glasses to move in personally in these factories uh, and to see and feel and touch what is ongoing. But before this will happen, maybe you will have the chance to come to our factories and to visit us. And for this special event and how to make it happen, I will ask again Francois to show us more about our forum in Obane. And this is also something that you should remember. This is part of our soul of Haker, and this is directly belonging to our production facilities in Europe. Welcome to our Haker Forum. Ready for a poll? I give you a few seconds to remember all what we have seen. And before we start the poll, let to make sure that besides manufacturing and factories and great products, uh, it's about you, our partners and customers uh, who are joining our journey for a better world in the future. So I hope you're ready to join our poll now. And I will start with some information. Started with our colleagues in the technical office. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Johannes. Uh, you, you hear me, I think, yeah? Yes, I do. Ah, great. So thank you very much. It was really interesting. Uh, you took us between uh, France and Germany. So, you know, I've been there, so, uh, and it felt a bit like real. Uh, we hope that the technology would go even um, faster and we can show virtually a better view for the factories. However, as we mentioned, 
we uh, we will be pleased to welcome you soon you know because things are getting uh, back to normality these days and hopefully you know um uh, in the coming uh, year and hopefully we will be able to receive you in person in uh, uh, in those factories now um uh, now we would like to uh, start the poll questionnaire so you, it's, you have time to answer the question that will appear on the screen already yeah okay great so you have more than one option you have the 1.5 million for you know how how many enclosures are manufactured in bliss castle germany every year 1.5 3.5.5 million enclosures Good, good. Now, so of course, uh, after a few days um, from this webinar, um, we will do a withdraw, and hopefully, you will be entitled for a gift of AirPods, <laughs> Apple AirPods, uh, accordingly. After that, we will be moving to the Q&A session. So um, if you have any question, perhaps already we had some questions during the webinar. And now if you have any question, um, we will be pleased to answer. So just uh, I will look into the questions we already that we have received. So, uh, first question that it's, it appears on the screen. What is the time, uh, what is the impact of COVID-19 on the production lines? Also the Im impact on logistics. So, Johannes, if you give us an idea about how we managed in Hagar uh, the impact of COVID-19 on production. And logistics, yeah. Uh, so, only we had uh, after the first uh, full lockdown in France, time to reorganize our production processes. And after not more than four weeks, we were ready to achieve 85% uh, output of the initial capacity. And after another two months, well, we finally achieved the output of 95% of the initial capacity. This shows that despite the fact that we had to take care on social distance and all the testings, making sure that people are not in risk, we could achieve more or less the 100% output as it was before. And by improving our time shifts, especially adding additional shifts over the weekend with our qualified employees, we finally achieved more than 100% before the pandemic. So production was at the end not a problem to um, be ensured. For logistics, now we had different issues uh, less problems to ship at the beginning, but also with all the social distancing, uh, many questions uh, how to achieve the 100%. But uh, finally, you know, we could achieve 90% of the initial output. And with a move to a new warehouse close to Strasbourg, and with already uh, first bricks in the ground for a new warehouse in Germany, now we are improving our situation step by step. And there is no question that we will achieve more than 100% before pandemic uh, times for our logistic activities. So uh, to answer the question uh, very briefly, no problems at all for capacity and logistics at the moment. So thank you, Johannes. Uh, indeed, we're proud in Hager that we managed well during the pandemic and after our production with uh, the commitments of our teams in the production sites mm -hmm. ah, yeah. uh, okay so do, do you hear me by the way because they some people they told me it's not very clear you hear it's i couldn't hear you Alan, at the moment okay. yeah sorry some connection problem i hope now you hear okay 
So now from your side, Johannes, just uh, read, read the second question. Yeah, are there more questions? Are we are ready to answer what yes. uh, ever is popping up. So the new question is, do you also have third party testing locally? I hope you will hear from me. This was a question? Yes. Can, can you repeat that? Because I haven't heard it uh, nicely. Do you also have third party test laboratory? No. To answer that, we don't have third party testing locally. Now we have to use uh, the official certified test labs in Europe, which is not only in Germany, but also in France, in the UK, uh, and in other countries like in um, Austria and in Turkey. Uh, for our local activities here, we also use the test labs um, in India and in China. So whenever these companies are certified and we try to make the tests close to the markets, now we go for a third party, but not locally to our factories. Okay, thank okay. you. Now I can hear you again, yeah, much better. Yeah, great. Yes, I, I restarted my, the browser myself. So now we have another question, which is, do you stock material in the UAE? So maybe I can, yes, answer on that. So indeed, yes, um, uh, as like the uh, the office, the offices where we manage and support the Middle East countries, 16 countries in the Middle East or in the region. Uh, and here in the UAE, we have a warehouse where we stock in order to serve uh, this region. So the, the 16 countries, so we have a stock in our, what be, what's being commercialized and used uh, in those countries. So indeed, yes, we have a warehouse here in Jabal Ali in the UAE. So I hope this answered the question. I think uh, this is it. I think this is it. So I, any other questions we have? I, this is, are the questions that I have already in the um, uh, chat box. I think there is another question. Maybe yes, just a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is, if, uh, is if, we, we, if do we have or do you have a factory in the Middle East? Okay, so as well, I can, you know, give some idea about this question. Currently, we don't have any factory in the Middle East, but what I would like to say, uh, today, um, as Hagar is um, uh, working to customize solution, so we are working with different uh, partners to do some uh, localization for some solutions in the Middle East. So this is what I can answer about this point, but no factories, but we have some localized solution or we have in the pipeline some, um, some actions to do some localization locally within uh, one of the Middle East countries. So this is it about this question. Any other questions? So I think we come to the end of our uh, virtual tour. Uh, thank you very much, Johannes. So uh, thank you very much. You, are, you, you have been our pilot for this tour and I hope you have enjoyed. Uh, as we have told you, you will have now um, a, a Pull, a pull questionnaire again to give your feedback. Also, as I mentioned before, you'll be receiving an email uh, for to give your thoughts and feedback about this webinar. And we are looking forward to uh, seeing you in our upcoming webinar where you will receive the agenda on our newsletter that you will receive. Thanks a lot. Thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you for hosting this meeting. Thank you for your participation. Thanks to my colleagues in Europe, Daniel Haker, Ipek, and Francois, not to show us the factories. And whenever you have some further questions, please let us know. I'm wishing you now a nice and great remaining week and take care on you and stay safe. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye bye.